Howdy, it's Mr. Russell. We're here to talk about our lab uh, that's about physical and chemical changes. You're going to want to have this out ready to go. This is your uh, lab that we're going to be covering. Now, unfortunately, I cannot do this uh, with y'all today. Uh, you guys are going to be with the sub. You guys are going to um, record your observations and watch me do it right now. Uh, I promise, guys, we'll get back to this and we will all do this together whenever I have all the materials and all the time to be able to commit 100% to you guys. Uh, we will use this stuff later because right now we've got this cool chemical reaction that's going on. It's um, aluminum and copper chloride are going to react with each other and they're going to perform what we call a single replacement reaction. Uh, the aluminum and the copper chloride are going to switch places. It's kind of crazy. There's copper ions just swimming around in here and they're going to switch places with the aluminum. So. Now the first step of this is to show you the materials. Hold on, I've got my balance right here. I've got my very large one liter beaker. I have some uh, copper chloride and I have my distilled water, a thermometer, a stirring rod, and I have my copper chloride already pre-made, my aluminum already pre-made. Now, the first step is to obtain about eight to 10 grams of copper chloride. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to put the beaker on the balance and I'm just going to weigh out just a little bit of this. So you're going to have to zoom in and come take a good close look at what this copper chloride looks like. Now this is the powdered form. I know your procedure says the crystals, but the stuff that I have is powdered. Now you can see how it's kind of changing color because it's a little wet down at the bottom but I want you all to make some observations right here. Now it's important to note that the mass that is reading at this moment is um, 0.94 grams, okay? So make sure you write that down. It is 0 0.94 grams. Now, go ahead and pause the video if you need to and make sure you get your five observations. Tell me if it's a physical or chemical property and tell me if it's an intensive or extensive property. The next step is to carefully add 40 uh, to 60 milliliters of tap water to the graduated cylinder, add the water to the crystals of the beaker, but do not stir. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to add some water here and actually to speed things up, I'm going to add just a little bit of water, but do not stir. I want you all to make your own little observations about that. Hopefully we can see that well. Maybe if I put a white background underneath, you can see um, what that looks like. So make some good observations. And the quantitative number you need right here is we're just going to estimate. This is just an estimate. Um, we're going to estimate maybe about 50 milliliters. Okay. Did you hear that? 50 milliliters, not 50.0, 50, 50 milliliters. Now, uh, so tell me if it's a chemical physical property, tell me if it's intensive or, or extensive. Next step, I am going to stir in the rest with the glass stirring rod until the crystals are com completely dissolved and then I'm going to take my temperature. All right, so I'm gonna stir that in and actually, it doesn't really matter because I have already got some prepped up and I'm just going to go get on. There we go. Now we're cooking. By the way, this is not how you're supposed to pour. You're always supposed to leave it on the table and then pour your substance into it. Alright. Very, very nice. So we have some very nice observations, a nice pretty blue color. Now, if I get a white background here, you can see um, this blue color. And you can also see the volume here. I will also accept this volume that you that you might be able to read from your uh, from your phone. Yeah. Now, the next step is to record the temperature solution. I'm going to place it right in the middle. Do you see how I'm doing this? It's not touching the bottom and it's not looking at anything and, and it's sitting right in the middle and it is 20, 
23.5 degrees Celsius. Did you hear that? 23.5 degrees Celsius. And I think we're ready. Make sure you record some observations and we're good to go. Next part is the fun part. We're going to take the thermometer out. Take this. Put this nice and neat. And I'm going to make sure that I'm standing right behind it so my lab coat will give you a nice clear picture. And we're going to crumple this aluminum foil into a loose ball. Okay, so it's a nice loose ball. See that? Hopefully we're making observations right now. And then we'll just place it into the copper chloride. Maybe if we can scoot things along, we're gonna. Ooh. Take a closer look for me. Let's see what you can see. All right, so the thermometer, or the temperature, has been rising, and it's been rising quite a, quite a bit. Right now, it's uh, 34 degrees Celsius and rising, so we're going to keep on letting it react and letting it progress. Make sure you're writing those observations in the chemical, physical property, and the intensive and extensive property. Go ahead and see if you can take a bird's eye view of this and see what happens. Yeah, the paper, the aluminum has all kind of crumpled up now. I can even stir it. Very, very nice. You can't smell this, but it is kind of a nasty smell. So maybe that could be a good observation. I would describe it as a foul odor. A foul odor is a good way. Hopefully you guys can see the steam that's coming out of it. And right now we just hit our maximum temperature of 54 degrees Celsius, which tells me that this reaction has completed all the way to as high as it's going to go. And now it's just going to keep on going, but the temperature is going to rather just steadily fall down. So pretty much it is done. We're going to let it sit. And I am going to explain what you need to do next. So the reaction is going to be complete, and we're just going to let it go. But eventually we're going to pour it into this jug as our disposal. And I will use the funnel to make sure we don't make a mess. Um, then... Um, if we turn to the back on our analysis, we need to make sure that we check our observations. Please do not, please make sure that they are observations and not interpretations. Look at your background to see what the difference between an observation and interpretation is. You have six post lab questions um, to give uh, and to write down, so make sure that you get those done, and these are going to be due tomorrow. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks and good.